good to uh, meet everybody as um as said i'm chris oldham senior policy and program manager for the city of london corporations uh, skills policy team and i am project lead for the skills for sustainable skyline task force uh, the, the skills for sustainable skyline task force is a new industry initiative uh, to address green skills gaps for central london's commercial built environment uh, for those who have not yet engaged with the city corporation uh, with the local authority for london square mile a uh, key thing to note is that we are politically neutral. We are not held by a Labour or Conservative Council, which gives us the flexibility of engaging with all London boroughs and indeed uh, all regions as well. Uh, that's relevant as this, this skills sustainable skyline, this green skills task force that I'm leading on is aiming to drive change for a range of central London boroughs, which we're defining as the uh, sub-regional partnership uh, central London forward. If I can please have the next slide. Oh, actually I'll do, sorry. Pardon me, I'll, uh, I'll pull my, my, my slides up. If you let me know if there's any problems with that, I can get those up for you. Super, thanks so much. Uh, can everyone see my, my screen? OK. I believe any? there are no issues. Yeah, I can see it from my end. You can see, this. perfect. Yeah. OK, well, we'll roll on. If I've got any issues, just pop it in the chat there. Um, so key thing to note is that we, uh, we the corporation, did some research um, as you'll see in the, the, the box on the, the left around this growing green skills challenge in, in, in the built environment. Uh, many colleagues on the call will not find this surprising at all. You know, about a third of construction jobs deemed hard to fill, a very undiverse built environment workforce. Um, construction roles not really seen as being attractive for young people in London. Um, and, and, and that kind of growing challenge as well as there's a growing demand for retrofits and, and, and refurb projects. Uh, using modern methods of construction and, uh, and green building management. Um, from our perspective, this is a real barrier to achieving a, uh, uh, a sustainable London that's, that's in, an engaging place, a globally competitive place to come and do business. We've also got our own net zero carbon targets for the, the City of London and in, indeed for, for, the, for the Greater London authorities as well. Um, and you know the, the stat that it's constantly bounded around the 40 percent of the carbon emissions come from the built environment it is really quite stark really that if we cannot decarbonize our built environment uh quite simply we haven't got a uh, a chance of hitting those net zero targets which is where we we uh we come in so why by by no means is city of london corporation a, a specialist in the built environment we're very very good and have a, a long history of acting as a convener using our convening power to bring together the right players uh, to the table. Um, so we did our research and found there's lots of work going on on the domestic sector. Uh, it's a green skills for decarbonizing domestic buildings and where there seemed to be a, a gap in insight and activity was around uh, the commercial sector. So securing a skilled workforce to build, retrofit, maintain, uh, uh, commercial buildings across central London boroughs. Again, that's defined by the, the, the central London forward 12 local authorities. Um, so we've we've brought together local national governments, uh, employers, training providers, industry bodies to capture the SME voice all together and, and given them that 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 um, essay question. How do we make sure that our workforce is large enough? How do we make sure our workforce has the skills it needs to decarbonize those commercial commercial buildings? We ran some stats, which you'll see in the orange box there, um, with 100 built environment professionals, you know, many from very senior, uh, reiterating that there is uh, a lack of skilled workers, a lack of a diverse workforce, and, and this growing green skills gap for the commercial built environment. Um, hence, we, we started this Skills Sustainable Skyline Task Force, which will run from this year until the end of 2025, with a, with a vision of attracting and reskilling people in London to, so that we, we can make sure we've got a workforce to decarbonise the commercial built environment in the square mile and the other central London boroughs. So in terms of impact, we're looking to uh, make sure that London is uh, continues to be a globally competitive and sustainable place to come and do business. If there's one thing that Brexit's taught us, it's that uh, our financial and professional services sector, you know, our, our, our finance sector, um, are not in any way tied to London that if we cannot compete globally and give them globally competitive offices, they'll, they'll go elsewhere. It's as simple as that. So we've got a real job on our hands to make sure we're able to offer 
globally competitive, sustainable businesses, uh, business locations, um, and as well as our own, of course, decarbonisation targets of, of 2040 uh, for um, uh, Greater London and 2050 uh, for the UK. Um, so to do that, we need to have access to a skilled workforce to decarbonise those buildings. And, and how we see that working is that we would, our uh, box in the bottom row, create a compelling evidence uh, to, to drive investment with better data on skills gaps uh, and, and then to drive more investment and then public debate around how we can do that. Uh, and then moving forward, bringing together uh, people and plans and resources to take action on the evidence and also look into uh, uh, on the third box to improve perception of the built environment as a career, raising awareness around why it's a great place to come and work and, and targeting diversity as well. Quick points not around scope is that we're looking at the full project life cycle of sustainable commercial buildings. So everywhere from design of buildings to uh, construction to retrofit and uh, crucially to operation and maintenance of sustainable commercial buildings. So it's a, it's a full project life cycle of roles. So it is construction, but it's much wider than that as well. So uh, to that end, we've uh, got a governance structure um, with three layers, a task force steering board of 15 senior leaders, including uh, the likes of um, the head of sustainability for Wilmot Dixon, Juliet, uh, uh, Juliet Barrett, uh, and Tim Balkan, CEO of the Construction Industry Training Board. It's really, really heavy hitters. The task force is chaired by our own um, uh, policy Chairman Chris Haywood, uh, our most senior elected uh, member and Deputy Chair is Charles Begley, Chief Exec of the City and Westminster Property Association and the London Property Alliance. Um, and our, our 15 uh, uh, senior leaders uh, responsible for dis deciding overall strategy and influence. They're supported by 53 uh, associate members who uh, act as task force champions and provide resources. And, and going back to the ask on everyone here today, we're currently recruiting working group members who are our subject matter experts who are committing to um, roughly attending six meetings, six working group task and finish meetings and agreeing to do work in between meetings to drive the task force work. Right. So just that's a little bit of a little bit of a prelude to what I'm going to ask in a moment. So we've got our, our steering board, our associate members and our working group members that we're currently recruiting who will actually be going on doing this work. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, um, this year our 2022 focus is around delivering the evidence base on the planning pipeline, skills and qualification gaps, both now and in future years, the business case for reskilling and upskilling, and finally the barriers to action. And that, that will, this evidence base will give us a credibility and the focus we need next year uh, to make sure that we're impactful and, and, uh, and credible. Um, so moving forward to 23, 24, from about April, May time, we'll be launching two work streams in tandem. Work stream two will be a direct response to the evidence. And we don't know exactly how that will look yet. Some initial themes emerging, uh, perhaps developing uh, new apprenticeship standards, new new courses. We, we had a colleague previously I know, mentioned their uh, retrofit coordinator course. Um, looking at new career pathways, perhaps using procurement levers and planning levers like section 106 to drive uh, demand for, for upskilling or perhaps actually locking finance to pay for upskilling. OK, so that, that's that's all in our, our work stream two, the response to the evidence barriers. And then work stream three, which will deliver alongside, will be an industry campaign with uh, an upskilling, reskilling arm looking at existing workers in the built environment and then a separate arm looking to reach out to schools and colleges and universities to uh, attract a large diverse cohort of people particularly from young young backgrounds into these built environment roles we've identified uh, to expand and diversify the workforce so and just to reiterate you've got a few names on on the screen these are all of our um, strategy steering board members who are chairing different working groups. So if any colleagues are interested in joining the working group, these are the kind of names who will be leading the conversations. So this year you've got the likes of Martin Gettings, uh, your, um, uh, uh, a mayor head of uh, sustainability at Brookfield, uh, David Fries from uh, B BSA in Actuate UK, uh, Julia Barrett with Mark Dixon, Fiona Mori from London South Bank University, Benjamin O'Connor, Luminant Architecture, 
and Hannah Vickers from Mace and, and Ian McElwee from the, for the fit out and interior sector. Uh, and that's only for this year. And again, you can see that some more of our strategy steering board will, will be driving change uh, next year as well. So if anyone's you know, keen to, to kind of join these leaders, we'll be actively recruiting uh, working group members. Uh, and again, Workstream 2 will be responding to the evidence. Workstream 3 will be upskilling existing workers and attracting new entrants, particularly from diverse backgrounds. So how can you get involved? Well, it says two kiosks. I've been very, very cheeky and added the third one on at the end. I'll, I'll get on to that in a second. The first one is to anyone in the call, if you think your organisation could be one of our new working group members for April, May next year until uh, the end of 23 and then perhaps the end of 24, get in touch. I'll, I'll give my details in, in a moment. We'll be asking for uh, about 10 days of your a year of your pro bono time that'll, that'll amount to uh, six meetings and delivering work in between meetings to drive change and actually get some of these outputs delivered so again and ask to join the task force as a working group member you'll be you'll be uh, joining on some really really big industry players great chance to network and, and hopefully do business as well as, as a bit of quick pro quo second if you have any insights, any reports, any data sets that could help answer these two questions that relate to work streams two and three, get in touch. We really want to hear from you. So uh, the first question relates to the response to the evidence. So what actionable solutions could we, the, the skills for Sustainable Skyline Task Force, deliver that will boost demand for green skills or perhaps will address some of the barriers that we know are there for upskilling, reskilling? OK, any insights, reports, data for that one, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. And secondly, how can we reach new and untapped pools of talent for these identified sustainable built environment roles? You know, we're looking at a workforce engagement campaign. There'll be a big comms campaign. What channels or messages for this comms campaign might be the most effective? And uh, to help you feed in that, off the press as of Friday, uh, just gone, we now have a green skills pulse survey, which I'm going to launch in a chat in, in, in a moment. Um, the, the link's there and I'll, I'll post in the chat. It's, it'll take you a grand total of eight minutes to fill out and it's your chance to feed in answers to the, the questions I've just posed. Uh, we're looking for 300 names by the end of the month. Uh, we've got a, a, a strong lead so far, so it'll be a, a great chance for your organisation to make sure your voice is being heard and, and to get involved in that. Uh, and we'll be directly responding to that, the, the survey results with our work next year. So you've got an opportunity to be a working group member and to feed in via this Green Skills Pulse survey or by giving me an email. And again, I'll, I'll share my details in a moment. Deadline for taking part in, in the Pulse survey is 28th of October. So make sure you do get involved quickly to, to make sure that your voice is, is heard around this, this, this agenda. And that neatly brings me on to the end. So I've got my details on screen there. I know Stacey's going to share the slides at the end and I will drop the link to the survey in the chat in a moment. Um, I believe we've got a little bit of time. I very much welcome any questions uh, or, or, or comments. I'll, I'll end my screen share there. Thanks, Stacey.